Welcome to Collecting and Representing Data Part 1. Now this particular resource is designed for learners at steps 1 and 2 of the learning progressions and is designed to increase their general understanding of how graphs represent data. Purpose and Overview Well the purpose of this resource is to support learners to develop an understanding of how bar graphs work specifically and they're going to do this by generating, organising and presenting their own information. By allowing learners to generate, organize, and present their own information, the idea is you increase engagement and the information becomes far more meaningful to the learners. Generating data. The last part of this resource is going to include some ideas that you could use in your context. But for now, we're going to look at how this might work in a sport and fitness context and simply ask the learners, what kind of physical activities do you do? And then, we're going to ask the learners to predict what other learners will say and record these on the board. Collecting the data. Write the learners' responses on the board. Now the learners will be thinking about what the other people will be doing, what their physical activities are, and you should get a good variety of ideas on the board. So running, walking, martial arts, cycling, rugby, lifting weights, tennis, tramping, crossfit, soccer, swimming. Now the learners are thinking about what other learners are thinking, so they're beginning to predict what the data might say, and we can come back to this at the end and compare. Teaching points. Now step three, hand out sticky notes and ask the learners to write their own responses on the notes and then have them stick these to the board. Organising the data. Now once the learners have written their physical activities on the sticky notes and put them on the whiteboard, you'll have a whiteboard that's full of different ideas that different people have done. The next activity is probably the hardest part, and that's looking at how we can organize these data. And what we're talking about is nice subsets that we can put things into. Now eventually, you have to decide how the data are going to be organized. And what you can see here is how it's been organized in a class that I ran, where the learners suggested that we break them into team sports, individual sports, and just general fitness. And so the idea is you let the learners take the post-its, and put them into a bar graph. So you will draw the axis on the board, the categories, and then ask the learners to arrange them as they see fit. Now, step five, draw as a bar. This is a subtle but important step. While the post-its are still there, you want to ask them what we might have on the vertical axis. What kind of numbers would be good to have there? And often learners will just be thinking they'll number one through to 10, uh, and depending on how many you get, that may be appropriate or not but it's a good idea to challenge them about how the numbering might work. So what you can see here is we've gone up in twos, zero, two, four, six, and so you would just mark that on the board. And then what the idea is, is we're gonna remove the post-its and replace them with a bar. The best way to do this is to outline the post-its with a whiteboard marker and then remove the post-its. Now for the final stage, step six, labeling the axes and the title. You're going to ask the learners, now that we've got our team sports, individual sports and fitness, the categories, and our numbers on the side, what more can we add to this graph to make it meaningful? And so we might want a title, for example. So the title at the top there is Participation in Organized and Non-Organized Activities. And we've got the bottom axis, which we've called the Types of Physical Activities, and on the side, the number of people doing them. At the end of all this, we have a graph written on the whiteboard that they've constructed themselves out of their own data, labeled, and now we can see how it works. So just in summary, write a question on the board to generate discussion and data. You know, write the learners' responses on the board, get them to predict what they think other people will say. Hand out the sticky notes and ask the learners to write their responses on the notes and then stick these to the whiteboard. Then have the learners discuss how these can be categorized, and that's always probably the most interesting part of this. And then make sure you draw it as a bar, so you're removing the, the stick it notes and you're drawing it just as a single bar and you're putting the axes in there as well. And then number six, labeling the axes in the title of the graph, important as well. And it's a good idea sometimes to take a photo of the graph that they've made, and you can do the activity again in a few weeks and compare the different data. Now just finally, ideas for topics. Uh, this is for a sport and fitness course. Some good ideas are books that people have read. Ask them to write down all the books they've read and then you can categorize these into genres. Movies that people have seen is always easy. Most people have seen movies. And you can categorize these into quality. Viewership numbers, that is how many people have seen them. Or the release date. Leisure activities, what type of things do people do when they're relaxing? 
If you really want to step it up, then you could have a look at unit standards that learners have achieved. You know, what unit standards have people got here? And you could categorize these into perhaps difficulty, timeframes, or motivation, and so on. Uh, this activity has a lot of scope to be expanded, and we're going to continue that in part two. Thank you.